Hi, this is Ian for Toilet of Hell Radio. Today we're talking with Fernando Ribeiro of Moonspell. Thank you for joining us, Fernando. Uh, my pleasure. The occasion for us uh, talking today is the re-release of Moonspell's 1999 album, The Butterfly Effect. But before we get into that, I think all interviews these days really got to start with uh, pandemic stuff. So how are you and the guys doing with all of this? Well, um, fortunately, I mean, first, thanks for having me in your show and, and, and Moonspell. Uh, it's a sign that we are doing well and alive and capable of putting two words together and, uh, and perform <laughs> on an interview at least. Um, on the other hand, I have to say that, um, you know, it's, it's unfortunate what's happening, um, in the world. I don't have this big opinion about, um, COVID, like uh, who originated it. I mean, I know the thing, I know it's a big mess, it's a big confusion in the minds of, um, of people. When it comes to musicians, we had uh, our ear almost, um, well, virtually lost with all the cancellations and the postponements. But um, so far we're keeping healthy, we're being very lucky. Uh, as far as the Moonspell plans go, they are all moved to 2021. Uh, festivals, um, etc. Just announced Vaken. We were supposed to be on this edition as well, so um, we were moved uh, together with a lot of other bands to 2021. And um, the thing is that in the beginning of 2019, in the end of 2019, sorry, we did a big tour with Rotten Christ throughout all Europe. And when I say big, it was because we were 60 days um, on the road and uh, trying to see the end of it. But um, actually, it was a big privilege because we did a lot. And uh, when in March, when we were faced with this problem, we felt that we really lucked out uh, being able to do all that extensive um, touring uh, in good conditions um, throughout Europe. Also, we were um, about to use this year not as a sabbatical year, but a slower year. You know, to um, in order to um, compose our new album for 2021, uh, be with our families um, as well, and so we just trying to do the best without uh, exaggerating, without getting into panic or fear, because we are from a small country, Portugal, uh, that even though has its chaos and its problems, it has nothing to do with the big countries. I mean, there's more people living. The three times the people living in São Paulo in Brazil, in one big city, than here in the whole of Portugal. So, for instance, uh, uh, today uh, we haven't reported any COVID-19 related death, which is something that, um, you know, it is what it is because the other death counts, car crashes, forest fires, you know, that never goes away. Uh, but um, it's a sign that we probably directing ourselves into some kind of normalcy, which will be good uh, for Moonspell, for our families, for our friends. And I hope that, uh, so I don't want to be like, oh, the COVID, you know, killed me, killed my plans. I think it's also time to learn not, not to be so self-centered, not to bug people with our first world problems, you know, so we're trying to keep it um, a positive mind and trying to um, still do something with 2020. But um, I think, the best news is that we are lucky and healthy and nobody of us uh, caught the virus. And even if we did, we're quite healthy people. So let's see what happens in 2021. But thanks for asking. So far, so good in Portugal. Yeah. I'm so glad to hear that. It sounds like it caught you at, at just the right time. If ever there's a good time for a pandemic, it sounds like it was the right time for Moonspell. Um, well, I, I don't, I don't know. It's the first pandemic I, <laughs> you know, so I, I don't know if it's going, it's, if it's going to be more or not. Uh, I mean, there's still a lot of confusion, still a lot of chaos, still a lot of, um, you know, complicated um, contexts to wrap your mind um, um, around. Um, but um, let's see what happens. Some people say it's going to be like constant now. Some people say it's just a little flu. I mean, what I what I see is that um, I, I don't think the world has been so polarized and fragmented as it is right now, because what you see is almost people, you know, fist fighting about who's right about the virus, like if we were all virologists um, <laughs> or something like that. That happens a lot in Portugal. It's a lot of... Um, a lot of theories. So I hope that um, we learn from this. Whatever is there to be learned and uh, whatever lesson is there to be taken, I don't know what it is, 
so I approach things with uh, with caution. You know, if I have to wear a mask, I don't love it, but I will do it. You know, if um, but also if I think it's an abuse, you know, to try to make our own decisions and to try to be informed uh, is also a healthy thing, uh, I would say. And um, in Portugal, and it's a small country, there's a lot of this information. Uh, about um, the virus, so you really have to be smart uh, as well, not only healthy. I obviously music is a scene, you know, uh, like the musical scene. There's many more bands than us. Uh, for instance, our friends in Catatonia, Paradise Lost, just to name a few, they released amazing albums this year, and um, they cannot go on the roads, and that's more problematic. You know, maybe we could be on their shoes um, as well. But like we've been talking and texting around with other band members, etc. In 2021, maybe it will be the best year of our lives, you know, because um, if everything goes according to the no plan that we don't have, people will be very keen in going to the live shows and um, experiencing, reliving the experience of uh, being um, not socially distanced because we also talking about rock and metal shows which is not the same as other shows that people can sit with um you know with uh, more let's say reserved places reverse uh, reserved seats and everything but um i hope that um you know we just um i think every band is trying to do their best not to lose contact uh, with their fans but i have to be honest as well of course there's the money issue uh, we live from music, lots of us are professionals and we don't do anything else. But on the other hand, when uh, people were already asking me, are you going to do some live streaming from your couch or your toilet seat? I, said, I was just no. going to ask you that. Yeah. Well, not, not yet, because I mean, I think that um, there's time, you know, without time, there's no romance. You know what I mean? So I think if I'm in the face of people, I learn not to judge anyone. People have different degrees of wanting attention you know i'm a married man i have a kid so i have a my plate is full but sometimes um people just like to share everything you know online for instance i can go on instagram and see people waking up going to bed cooking asking people how to cook it's not my thing with all the respect it's other people's thing but sometimes i wonder if we do need that much attention because if it was at the pan pandemics we just toured intensively in europe with rotten christ we went everywhere uh, from istanbul to greece you know from portugal to the U to the uk so i think people could live two or three months without um, watching a moonspell uh, gig you know because that's just the way um, it is, but um, right now, after you know the um, the dust settled a little, little bit, and that things evolved as well. Uh, like if you if you see the Vakin open air live streaming, it's something that yeah, you want to even if it was for free, you would pay a ticket to see that because it's well organized, it's well thought, and it's something professional. It's a professional brand making a professional show on a different method with a different platform. So that's what we want to do. So, I mean, I have three goals this year um, when it comes as far as Moonspell goes. First is to do a physical concert. And I think that will happen maybe in Portugal uh, because there's some entrepreneurs here, you know, just um, within the, the, the new conditions of security with the mass seated places, etc. They want to book Moonspell. Uh, for sure, we're going to do it just not to lose the hang of it as well. Yeah. And we, we want to do a streaming worldwide for our all our fans outside Portugal, obviously. And we want people, if we can, to listen to one new song already finished, you know, mastered from our new album. That's the three goals we are trying to, of course, in a normal year, we have all these goals to play here and there, play the festival. But right now we have to keep our expectations in check. And I think these three goals, if we do them, I'll be happy. Considering that under the circumstances, I, I think I'll be happy with 2020 as far as Moonspell goes. You mentioned the new album is underway. How far are you on that material right now? Well, I have to say that um, we had worked already in the, a newer, in the new album, um, even when we were on tour in 2019. But then um, we look at each other and said, well, we just, um, you know, we'll bring a lot of it to the ground and rebuild. And now we have the time. 
So all our live engagements were either, um, you know, postponed or canceled. So we dedicated ourselves a little bit further into explore um, our album. I mean, um, we still um, halfway through making um, demos. Uh, compared to our latest album, 1755, it's going to be very different from that because it's not going to be sung in Portuguese, it's going to be sung in English again. So I think it's more of a follow-up of Extinct from 2015. Not the whole of Extinct, with a lot of new brands and fresh uh, ideas, we definitely hope, but more in that kind of dark metal, melancholy, meets heaviness, that is um, kind of, in a way, what people expect from our or is our signature um has a, as a band but uh, right now uh, even though it's hard to um to explain without having you know music to play for you um i think it's a very personal album uh, it's, it's it has a lot of the moonspell personality uh, in there it's very musical because we are totally open minded with um, with um, moonspell we did a little bit of everything from extreme metal you know, to gothic metal, so it's not like we're going to piss off people, even the album that we're reissuing <laughs> now, Butterfly Effect, it pissed a lot of people back then, nowadays it has a lot of attention, some people said that they hated it back then, they love it now, so music is dynamics, and it's, it's very hard for you to guess or to play safe, so for us, it has to be original, it has to have a lot of quality, these are two, the, the two main, the two keywords, um, for the next album, and it has to say something as well, lyrically. Um, I think that with the last albums, like Night Eternal, there was most this apocalyptic feeling. With Alpha Noir, there was more this Phoenix Rising kind of feeling, like fighting for the stuff. Extinct came back again to things that are gone from our world, not only the, in the animal kingdom, but also in the human kingdom, stuff that we like, people that we love, places that went completely extinct because there's no coming back um, for them. And I think this album is going to be about solitude, being alone as a mm. choice. Let's call it um, this way. That's what I'm working. We have a producer already. It's, his name is uh, Jaime Gomez Areliano. He's from the UK. He did the last Paradise Lost, Obsidian, that I loved. He also worked with the many bands from Cathedral um, up to Ghost, Ulver. So he has a kind of... Um, psychedelic doom progressive background and we still and uh, moonspell has these qualities uh, in our music that we want to exploit uh, further with this um new album wow i'm thrilled to hear that this is going to be possibly in the vein of extinct because personally that's one of my absolute favorites um cool. but let's talk about uh you you brought it up the butterfly effect was a bit of a divisive album when it came out so it's interesting to me that this is one that you want to re-release well, um, I have to say, just for the record, that um, um, the main reason behind every re-release, uh, and also particularly about Butterfly uh, Effect, is that we formed a small label here in Portugal. I did it with a partner. Um, it's called Alma Mater Records, uh, and we specialize in Moonspell, obviously. Mm. And, but also we release um, Portuguese metal bands, you know, to use the, the expertise and all the knowledge and all the contacts as well. From uh, from Moonspell to make these uh, these bands also um, you know to make the Portuguese metal scene a little bit more known uh, in the in the outside um, in the out in the outside scene just as Moonspell um, is and 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 was since Wolfhard especially so um, one of the things that we wanted to do with Alma Mater Records was to cater to all the Moonspell community by having every title of our catalog which is already very extensive available. So we approached Century Media and we placed an order in the warehouse, a friend of us, say we want 50 albums from Sin, we have all these people ready to buy them, everybody says nobody buys music anymore, you know, it's not the truth, at least not for metal, you know, mm -hmm. some people are not happy with the sound quality, myself included, of Spotify or of YouTube rips, something like that, so we need vinyl, we need, and everything was out of print and virtually sold out. So we started off, why don't we print it? Because Moonspell already has a legacy and people will for sure appreciate it because there's a public demand. So um, we did with Century Media and Amamata Records, we did uh, some vinyl versions of um, Wolf Art and Irreligious to start off. 
also to test the waters. And mm -hmm. they were amazingly successful. I never expected that uh, an album such as Wolf Art became so legendary in the in the metal scene. Let's call it this way. Even if I say it so, I say it as a almost as an outside source because you know one thing is to be there in '95 recording it. Another thing is to be like more 25 years ago, you know, selling it via our, our own band um, shop. Also, the newer generations, they were very happy that they now they have vinyls and CDs that they can listen to as well, contrary to that popular speech that nobody listens to music except on digital. That's not absolutely truth, um, I'll say, or at least not our um, experience. And then I involved Napalm Records, which is our Moonspell's actual label, um, to do something out of the century media years. So Butterfly Effect is also um another part of a back catalog of century media that will be from sin pecado that we released last year butterfly effect that we released now in august and is being re really um sought for really collectible uh, as well some editions are virtually sold out um, already on pre-sale then uh, next year i believe we'll do darkness and hope and then uh, antidotes as far as butterfly effects um goes uh, I always do, you know, it's a pompous name, like music business, <laughs> executive production, which for me is picking up the pieces and making it a collectible because I have a lot of experience with records. I'm a collector myself and with Moonspell, I've been in Moonspell since the beginning. So I remember very well where I have put, you know, the demo tapes, the remixes, the live tapes, there's a small archive. It's not very organized, but I can get my way through there. So um, this edition is really cool because we took the chance of redesigning it, different cover, different artwork uh, for the better, obviously. Mm -hmm. And um, it's coming out on um, a couple of editions, one digipack. And on the digipack, instead of the liner notes, we put a little bit of our biography book that came out last year via Cult Never Dies called Wolf is Wur Man. And uh, there's the butterfly effect chapter in there, so people can get some context about how, why the album was so differently done, and um, and it's so different so from all the other albums in um, in the Moonspell um, career. And then we have a tape. Believe it or not, it's a symbol of our generation. I think it's sold out now. I was like tape. You say yeah. Then I picked up you know my old tape recording. It doesn't sound that bad, <laughs> I have to say. <laughs> I listened to a lot of tapes throughout my life. The first Moonspell releases were demo tapes. You know, I was a heavy tape trader um, back in the day, so it's quite cute and it's quite like a, almost a symbol of our generation, the tapes. It's our digital music, let's call it this way, even though it's analogic. Mm -hmm. And then we have, you know, for me, what's the lion's share of these uh, re-releases? It's the vinyl editions. We have the Napalm edition and the band edition, which differ from the color of the vinyl. Ours is a yellow, greenish ink spot. Looks amazing. And I have to say, I'm very, very happy because um, it's not just putting it in the market. It's made It's made with love, <laughs> you know? It has a <laughs> lot of, um, it has a personal touch of the band that wrote and recorded um, the album. People are really, crazy about the, this edition, which is surprising to say the least. And they are listening, they're giving another chance to the album. Like you said, it was very, um, it divided the waters um, a little bit. It's a very ugly, dry album, you know, scientific, uh, even when it comes to the theme of the album. But um, music, like I said earlier, it's dynamics. So uh, you cannot, It's for me, it's a good sign that people didn't, you know, uh, buried in the shelf and never picked it up uh, again. I, I, honestly, if you ask me, I'm very surprised about all the commotion around Butterfly Effect. Yeah, I gotta say, when it came out, I absolutely loved it, and I didn't think it was a huge departure from your earlier work. So I, I tried to go back and listen to it to figure out, you know, maybe what people were hearing in it, and I, I guess I've got some ideas about uh, why it struck people as sounding so different, but. I guess I'd like to hear from you uh, about the recording of that session. I'm, I'm especially thinking about, you know, this is 1999, so recording technology wasn't really computer-based. You weren't necessarily Pro Tools at the time. So to get a lot of the sounds you were getting, I imagine, took a lot more work than it would if we did it today. 
Uh, actually, and curiously enough, it was the last um, album we recorded on tape, um, not on the um, via digital. So um, that plays a part with all. I don't know if uh, many people listening would, and with bands have recorded it on tape, but we had the punch ins. We had to follow up. We had we had to play. The engineer had to cut the tape right. It was like making a movie almost, and the tape was bloody expensive as well. So we we wanted to um, you know keep it um, keep it right and keep it neat um, as well. I think that um, to uh, understand butterfly effect, the reaction and not the music, we have to uh, go a little bit back to what uh, European metal, especially, was back in ninety eight ninety nine. Um, there was. Um, resurgence of bands that were very classic, like Emmerfall, for instance, and people were very keen in keeping that identity of metal. Everything that was a little bit out of the box, as we say today, was not seen by many people as um, good, as worthwhile, and some people were uh, accusing the bands of selling out, not only Moonspell, but My Dying Bride, Paradise Lost, Catatonia, Opeth, because they are not, they were changing, and they were... Um, evolving nowadays 20 years after they say wow it was a very groundbreaking record which i don't agree i think moonspell has never been groundbreaking but in the other hand we've always been a free band uh, we never had a musical agenda we always um wrote songs about subjects and about what surrounded us in a way and 1999 was the year of the changing of the millennium so um, I don't know if people remember, you know, now with all these pandemics and chaos out in the streets in the, uh, all countries, but um, there was a kind of um, chamber, pre-chamber of chaos back then. It was uh, the I2K, the computer virus, the stock will crash, yeah. you know, the, the planes would fall, um, people will get their privacy um, invaded. It happened, but not from 99 to 2000. It, definitely happened you know then year after year we got a lot of um, of our privacy uh, taken by the giant um, uh, corporate enterprises of technology uh, we get the virus now we get a lot of stuff so the album was about that and obviously we wouldn't write ballads and we wouldn't write dark gothic metal we would write something more electronic more aggressive more in your face and to record that was quite a wild experience. We went to London. We went to a studio called the Trident 2. We had no idea back then, but it was the studio where most of Ziggy Stardust was recorded. But we had wow. no we had no idea back um, back then. They told us later it was an old studio. Nowadays it's not a studio anymore. I think it's a restaurant, something like that. But the, it was a studio with a lot of history, and we could feel that the way it was shaped. So we kind of um, had a lot of fun doing 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 the crazy experiments, even on tape. Uh, I remember throwing out uh, to make that effect, uh, throwing uh, drum pieces out of the balcony. You know, I remember sometimes I said, "Well, I don't really have a vocal line, but I had an old dictaphone, and I recorded there and put it on the microphone." So that's why there's all these weird, you know, second vocals um, over there. Etc. So, um, you know, and what about were... Pedro? It sounds sorry to. Uh, it no sounds like Pedro was really doing some different stuff there because on earlier albums, the the keyboards are really just like it sounds to me like just a keyboard playing like one instrument. It's a keyboard, but by Butterfly Effect, it sounds to me like he's gotten his hands on sequencers and he's really doing many more layers than just you know playing a keyboard. Is it, is that accurate? Definitely. Pedro is a very important piece on Moonspell. He's a very discreet guy, but, uh, but he's our main songwriter together with Ricardo, our guitar player, you know, and I kind of envy them because, uh, you know, they, they're always, uh, even for the new album, they're always, they spend most of the time they spend on Moonspell is writing music. You know, sometimes, uh, of course, I write lyrics and do the concept, etc. But sometimes I'm making a lot of um, manage more management work or even promo work. And I always say, yeah, you guys got um, you really you know the sweet spot of Moonspell, which is to create music. And I think Butterfly Effect was definitely Pedro screaming for independence. 
it showed a lot of initiative back then. I remember back then we lost our rehearsal space, which was very hard for a band in Portugal up to have an, a, a different one. And uh, Pedro didn't give up. We didn't have a big hiatus from um, Sin to Butterfly Effect. It was just one, uh, one year, one and a half years. Um, so um, he came up with this crazy electronic stuff. I remember he was listening a lot of Leipach, Nine Inch Nails, especially. So he got me into that. And I mean, when he told me these ideas, I was very surprised by his initiative, uh, but very welcoming as well, because I was reading a lot about science, about the butterfly effect, about irregular patterns uh, of chaos that actually create the order or in the nature world. I was reading about plants, <laughs> about all that stuff. And um, it seems like um, the two worlds had a lot to do with each other. So even though he was crazy, he had in me, you know, when you have a guy say, let's go on this crazy adventure, but he needs comp company. So I was the company. You know, I said, <laughs> let's go. Uh, I think it's crazy enough. The label Centrimeter was like, what are you guys doing now? I said, well, you listen to it in the end. It's always been like this um, with Moonspell. They even had a little hard time marketing it, uh, I would say. But um, it's not that we are unconscious or that we don't care about our fans. It's not like that. We do care about our fans. And by caring about them, we don't want to fool them. So we want to have a genuine album. And then uh, Butterfly Effect, like it or not, crazy or not, is genuine. It's Pedro with all this crazy electronic sampling, uh, loops, recording stuff, and me with a concept that probably is not about the Middle Earth or about Vikings or about, you know, Second World War, but that I found that we could do a metal, metal album um, with it. And um, the result was what came out from the Trident Studios. And I mean, 20 years after, uh, people still find it fresh because probably either they didn't listen to it heavily or there was a lot of uh, hidden clues to uh, hidden uh, to make this album happen in the mind of uh, in the mind of people. Andy Riley was the engineer and producer on that. And I think this is the only time you worked with him. Is that how is how is he chosen as the producer for this? It was a bit crazy, you know. We really liked to work with Andy, but um, when we went to London, we had um, we thought we were under the expectation that we will work also with Andy from the Orb, you know, the electronic oh, band. Wow! Yeah, because because he was there. I don't remember his last name, but he's also was also called Andy. And Andy Riley was more of a guy that uh, used to do hard rock and rock and roll. So everything, the setup was quite, you know, weird even. But I think he, it was what we what was meant to be because we actually consider working with producers more around um, the line of um, like Rice Fulber, for instance. But I think those people either said no or no, were not available at the time. So we decided, well, let's let's go. And Andy was crazy enough, just like us, to, <laughs> to record that. But we kind of lost track um, uh, with him. But I think he did a great job because it was an album that was easy to record because there was a lot of things. Nowadays, you pre-produce and you go to studio like we did with Extinct and you try to have a great great brilliant performance um in there uh, with uh, butterfly effect we kind of brought more the pieces to a puzzle you know and not mm -hmm. the puzzle uh, already with you know with the with a puzzle solution or or map and i think it did um it did very well and um he taught us a lot as well he was a very experienced uh, producer but it's curious i never heard of him anymore that's that's for sure we didn't we didn't stay in touch and I don't think he even came to the shows in London. I have no idea. <laughs> you know, everything is weird about this album. So uh, I have no idea where, where he's, if he did something else. I know the studio was sold, but I don't know. I don't know the whereabouts or um, what what he's doing right now. If he's still in the business, even. Yeah, I actually thought to look it up because I had never seen the name before. But he seems to have a recording studio of his own in oh, cool, uh, I think cool. Georgia, the United States. So he, oh he's yeah, still in the I think so yeah, I think so yeah. Cool, cool. You mentioned doing live support for Butterfly Effect, and that, you know, based on how it was crafted in the studio from puzzle pieces, how it relies on a lot of you know sequence textures. Was it 
a really different experience for you to be doing these songs live compared to material from other albums where you suddenly doing, I don't know, uh, backing tracks to the drummer need a click on stage. Yeah, we, we had to change a lot of our previous setup. Uh, let's call this way, even though Moonspell was uh, more of a gothic metal band back then, uh, everything was very much rock and roll. You know, everything was very much in a format classic. We had keyboards. Yeah, but we didn't have sequence stuff. We had very, we started flirting with that with scene, but Butterfly was um, really much more uh, into that uh, scope of things. The thing is that one thing that happened is that Pedro um, came also to play the guitar because the album was very heavy as well and very um, industrial and very cutthroat even. So we needed a, 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 a sound that was a little bit more dry a little bit more in your face. Then uh, I know that uh, we had this crazy light show with these, um, you know, um, machines called Very Lights that we hired here in Portugal. And it seems like they are very good or something, but everybody was crazy when we set up shop um, in all the shows. It was a very, very different show. I had uh, very good memories of that. I remember we toured with Creator and they had Endorama, which was an album not typical for Creator as well, but we had a lot of fun with Mila and the guys back then and the shows um, were full, but there was a lot of adaptation that we had to do in terms of uh, drum kit, in terms of the sound. It was much more um, electronic with pads, with a lot of sequencers, with some uh, backing tracks. And uh, nowadays when we started, you know, it's been a while since we played Butterfly Effect songs. Now with the re-release and when we have live shows or live streaming, we'll bring them back. Uh, again into the um, into the um, into the set list uh, of of the band uh, but also we're trying to make it more organic because even though there's a lot of electronic paraphernalia going on you know with vocals there's a lot of stuff that are recorded on this old rec recording that we put on tape and um, etc when you came down to the basics that's what we found out as musicians as well when we were rehearsing for instance soul sick that we played in a tv show um here in portugal there's a cool organic feeling um into that um as well the production of andy made it even more electronic uh, by our request uh, mm -hmm. of course maybe it, and then andy from the orb he did um some kind of a consultant as well just drop this in here or repeat this loop and um, we didn't have a lot of experience with the electronic music, but uh, in the end, um, I think the result was crazy enough uh, to match with the original idea. And at least me and Pedro were very happy um, about the album. Obviously, it met mixed reactions, but I mean, that's something that we cannot control and that we didn't want to control. I think in the Butterfly Effect, we're not in control of anything, really. <laughs> we're just uh, the band living living a crazy moment because nowadays it's even crazier, but those days were a mixture between, you know, the end approaching with all the I2K and the computer virus and the, the apocalypse. But on the other hand, there was a lot of hope um, as well. This wouldn't happen or that the world would change. Nowadays, it's not so fun. Uh, anymore mm. you know it's like we had bad news back then but we could go on nowadays it's hard to pick up you know the pieces and go back and go back to work go back to the shows i think this will be um uh, the covid 19 will be heavier on the world and heavy on people i would say it will be a lot of more killing more people than the old plagues or even that the flu but the psychological effects when, um, you know, multiplied by all the social networking, all the polarization of the world. I believe in COVID. I don't believe in COVID. I wear a mask. I don't wear a mask. I think it's going to, um, to uh, we're going to pay definitely a big price uh, for this. Well, I'm hoping that you do uh, pull off this plan to have a show sometime uh, in the near future and stream it. Because one of the things that I... I've never seen you live personally, but I absolutely love watching uh, live concert footage of you. Uh, and I always wonder, what does it take to pull off some of this live design that I see? You know, you have the iconic look in the uh, mirrored jacket and laser gloves. You have uh, sometimes, you know, uh, backing singers. I mean, this, the productions get elaborate. How do you work on that along with your live support crew to come up with such stunning, coherent aesthetics? 
Well, thanks. I mean, unfortunately, we don't have budget enough to tour around the world. Also, with the, with the, all the production we have, sometimes we have to adapt in order to have something decent um, as well. But I always felt, um, well, whatever, that uh, musicians are like storytellers. Since the Troubadours, you know, they always put up a little show in order to please the king and the queen. It was not just about going there and playing. There was some dance, there was some other stuff. So I always approach music, live music, as something that must tell a story a little bit like theater. So uh, theater and cinema, they always have a script, you know, and I think the best script, and that's the meeting we have when we have the brainstorm about how is it going to be the next tour or the next uh, live shows? How is it going to be the streaming show? Um, we go uh, through the repertoire and we go through the lyrics and the lyrics have the images and we try to, um, in a way, um, take that image and make an effect out of that. That's why the laser gloves were born. That's why, you know, the girl on Extinct, the actress, uh, was there because she was on the cover um, as well. So we kind of take it like not take it more as a musical let's call it this way without being corny hopefully sometimes we have been corny but i think that's the part of the charm um as oh, well yeah. Oh, and yeah. um and then just really the metal show uh, with all due respect uh, i think i always like to have a, a a little show and i think it has to work for instance i went the last time i saw metallica it was the 360 and i don't think it works for metal I like it stereo and people and people are here and the band is there on mm -hmm. stage. But when I go through the old tapes or through the old shows, like Justice for All with all the crosses and all the props, it's an amazing show. That's the kind of st stuff um, I really like using probably the, the things now from the future we live now, the lasers, you know, the drones, etc. But also to have a little bit of the old school feeling. We have a lot of props in Moons, but we just changed studio. And I don't know what to make with the with the props, with the crosses, with the big symbol, because they are all physical. And um, so and you just real. have a giant warehouse full of all of these props still sitting yeah. around. Some of them, yeah. Some of them uh, we actually have to get rid of, or they are recycled into other shows, like uh, dance shows, etc. Especially when it comes to lights, etc. But uh, unfortunately. Um, you know, uh, we're not the Rolling Stones. I heard this so many thousand times, maybe. And I cannot have them. Um, I think um, one of them um, had, um, was it? I don't know if it was uh, uh, Mick Jagger, probably. I have no idea. But I know that they had these bridges to Babylon, but they had this show with the bridges. And um, I think Keith Richards has it in his garden. You know, I don't have a garden, so I cannot put my <laughs> my stuff um, over there. We already thought about making a big exhibition in our local uh, hometown, which is a small urban suburb here around uh, Lisbon to bring out um, all that stuff. But um, we'll see. But I think that um, next a album... museum of moon spell would be amazing. Yeah, we have some stuff in the walls of the hard rock. I was very surprised that such a big institution asked us. We have stuff in Lisbon, obviously. We have stuff in Hamburg and we have stuff in Istanbul um, as well. Some, you know, I don't know, props and uh, guitars, etc. cetera. But um, we, like, we like to have stuff, that's, um, that's for sure. We just did a TV show here for the national television. They're trying to help the best they can. So they hired the bands to make a series of shows with the most important bands with every style that was really cool from father to metal. And um, we brought our crosses, which are made, you know, to be light so that the crew doesn't have to carry the cross <laughs> eventually. <laughs> uh, that's not so heavy. And uh, they were like, why, why the hell do you want that? This is for TV. And say, well, on TV, we are Moonspell. And you hired us because we are Moonspell. So if we have crosses on the live show, we'll have crosses on the TV show uh, as well. That's the, that's the end of it. And so we did have that. And it's coming out in September as well, that, um, that TV show. And for the stream that we are planning to do in the end of October, we're thinking about having a smart... Uh, idea as well, maybe um, as it's a full moon, I already checked it, uh, probably the day that we're going to do it, probably we are teaming up with the Astronomy Institute here in Portugal and put a big telescope that will um, uh, display uh, live images from the moon 
which I think it will be really cool and really conceptual. It's just like this little trick. It's not like we are going to make, um, you know, holograms and, and all of that. But uh, I think sometimes a simple crafted idea with love, with thought, uh, can bring also the shows closer to the fans, especially when you do it with streaming. It's not going to be as warm or as passionate as with people. You know, that's for sure. We already did uh, a couple of recordings without people also to test because we're going to also to um, release in September um, a fan club uh, via Patreon uh, by per subscription where we are going to make a lot of special contents uh, for the fans and also to support ourselves um, as well without any middleman. So the money will come directly uh, to the band. So we are also test driving some some formats that we can do this more and um, more often often it's going is going to be called the wolf pack um, club and i think it's going to be a really good idea because it's COVID free and we don't need to travel and maybe we can be with people with our true fans in um, a more um let's say uh, modern way but also um the fan club will have you know the physical thing to send the record when it's out that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm 45 now. I'm going to be 46. So I started recording in tape, like butterfly effect. Um, I'm not a fan of many technologies, but I'm not that kind of guy that says, "Well, I'm not going to touch there." I think a good symbiosis of everything can really help a band in 2020 and 2021. Because to talk about 2020, you know, it's a waste of time for most people. But we're still trying to. Um, to make a do with what we have in our hands. And I think, for instance, the back repertoire was definitely a very good idea because the records are out again. It's also a, a way of making our name talked again with the interviews and whatnot. And I think that um, it's very important for the band not to be uh, too much now in the face of people, but not, not also to be uh, away uh, from their radar. I think the fine balance is what we're looking for with smart uh, ideas and ideas that people uh, love to see. Romance requires time. Yes, I think that that's um, the big challenge of um, today, especially when you have such, um, you know, a big, let's call it big, at least a long career, is to, um, to um, do the time management wisely and also to release contents that um, are really worth people's time and money. Um, as well. That's why when we do these re-releases, it's not like we're just putting it in a, in a sleeve and there we go. We could have done that, but, you know, we spend a lot of time producing and trying to have cool stuff and unreleased stuff to attach to these re-releases like we have in Butterfly Effect. Last topic to touch on when it comes to the Moonspell aesthetic, you've done everything from Y2K anxiety, futuristic style things to werewolves. And to, to me, it's it's always recognizably gothy and metal, but it's always distinctly a Moonspell take on goth metal. And it's always really difficult to express a sensibility simply. But I wonder, could you give me an example of an idea of something that you rejected because it just didn't seem like a moon spell sort of thing, whether it be an image or a lyric or something like that? Well, um, I remember, I mean, I read a lot and I think uh, most of my inspiration comes from books and books, they uh, paint you a palette of things uh, or they um, provide a palette of things that you can, uh, colors that you can use um you know the way you you want i always uh, tend to say that literature for me is the most complete form of art because it's incomplete because it, when you read tree in a book uh you think about a tree but you think about the tree that you saw on your way to school or to your work and here in portugal i think about the tree as well but a totally different tea, tree you can um think about a willow i can um think about a, a pine tree so I think that's kind of uh, the way we see things uh, differently, but together, if you know what I mean, it's very, very important to pick up the subjects of Moonspell. And then time in between the albums and what the quality of the authors you read as well as my, as far as I'm concerned, as a lyric writer, 
plays um, a key role to what I'm going to uh, write um, next. So not that I'm ripping off from books, but I definitely I'm collecting the pieces to make my own scripts and then that influences the music as well. So having said that, when we started off with many albums and the most romantic European themes like uh, werewolves, vampires, etc., knowledge, philosophy, etc. Since Night Eternal, that was um, a 2009 album, I feel a, a line going through all my texts. I think Night Eternal was really about the apocalypse. The other thing with Alpha Noir, Omega White was more about the kind of arising again and Extinct was about extinction, not at just the animal kingdom level, like I said, but also things that have gone away from our lives, like pubs, people, drinks, objects, etc., that are not coming back because their time in the world has ended and how we live with that um, with that loss. So for the next album, I think I thought about, you know, after reading a lot, that the main subject will be solitude, being alone as a choice. You know, I thought about this about uh, before COVID-19, of course, that when I released the, the album and when we 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 come up with the title and everything everybody will think it's COVID-19 but I will say I will know myself <laughs> that I thought about this a little bit uh, before because it's a subject that interests me but to answer to your question when we recorded The Antidote the last album via Century Media in 2003 um, I had the concept the guys had music and they wanted me to do um, or they suggested me to do a concept about cold because when they were um, listening to their own songs they thought it was cold it was devastated it was ice and like all uh, black was, metal cold cold yeah and yeah. i said well that's very interesting but that's not a subject uh, of what that i feel comfortable uh, about obviously a lot of bands don't have this discussion you know this is, even seems like a waste of time but it's not we municipal we love to have these discussions and whenever we set up to make an album, it's 50-50 talking and 50 songwriting and composing and, and making um, vocal and, and lyrical and uh, instruments ideas. So back then I suggested let's make an album about fear, which I think it's a much more uh, thing here from the south of Europe um, as well, as well from the north of Europe as well throughout the world. And let's call it the antidote because the stuff that we are talking about here it's about also be having something that uh, is contra fear, that fights fear, fear as a something that you learn from, but also something that you learn how to conquest, conquest and take over so you can go on with your life. So I rejected the cold idea. I knew what they are going um, uh, about, but like I said, this is something that's Dark Throne or um, Satyricon would write much better than than me. And at the time I was reading books that had a lot to do with fear, different kinds of fear, you know, fear of going out, not phobias, but fear of being yourself, fear of telling something to the one you love or hate. And The Antidote was born because I rejected a little bit that way. Uh, I didn't find it, if you know what I mean, like a Moonspell theme for that album and I'm very keen if someone has a better idea I'll listen to it but so far as a singer and as a lyric writer I had the best I think ideas <laughs> for lyrics and vocals so um, sometimes we follow my lead yeah I follow the other guys Pedro and uh, Ricardo when it comes to music but they also follow my lead there's a lot of trust in between um, each other each member of, um, of Moonspell that we can uh, definitely learn from each other and say no or yes um, when when time is up. Yeah. Well, I think it's absolutely paid off. I'm not surprised to hear at all that, that this is a really deliberate process for you. And I'm just fascinated to hear, you know, Moonspell is, is not going to do cold. They're going to do fear. And that makes perfect sense to me as a fan of yours when you explain it to me. So it's great to hear that insight from you. Cool. <laughs> Well, Fernando, thank you so much for uh, talking with us here on Toilet of Hell Radio. Is there anything you'd like to say to our listeners before I let you go back into isolation? <laughs> well, um, I kind of like is isolation, even though I'm Portuguese and Portuguese people are social and, and sociable um, as well. 
we have this kind of uh, two-sided nature. Uh, I'd like to thank you very much um, for the opportunity in being here with you in Talit of Hell. And also um, for people, first and foremost, the most important is to wish everybody health and luck. I think that's the things we need the most in order to be able also to um, enjoy the solace of music. Uh, Moonspell, if you want to follow us in moonspell.com, social networking, uh, most of our news are, tra are transmitted over there. So I, I think around Halloween this year, 31st of October, around that time, we'll have our first worldwide uh, live streaming um, shows that we've been waiting for the right opportunity um, you know, to present that to you. And in 2021, uh, we'll have a new album, and I hope that this year is better for everyone, for Moonspell fans, but also for everyone that even hate us, because we all need a good year and we all need the positive outcome uh, of this big mess um, that we are living right now. So stay healthy and lucky and um, enjoy life under the spell. Thank you so much, Fernando. No problem.